good morning students so today we have come to the uh, end of the session in unit 3 so this is about uh, symmetries so we are going to discuss symmetries parity and time reversal so that will be the last uh, uh, section in this unit so symmetry merely it means that we know already about uh, day to day life so this is our symmetry okay suppose if we have any mirror then uh, this will exact, exactly resemble within the opposite direction okay so what we call this as uh, inversion inversion property but uh, the subject symmetry the concept of symmetry will be different in different subjects so they are not unique but we have taken exactly we have taken from the classical mechanics the concept of symmetry in quantum mechanics exactly taken from the classical physics in classical physics whenever we talk about the symmetry we will always think about the equation of motion so equation of motion the energy some observables so energy uh, or angular momentum or linear momentum will be conserved it's a constant quantity similarly in quantum mechanics also those observables will be conserved it's a constant those observables for example we are talking about energy linear momentum angular momentum so they are all observables in quantum mechanics so they are all uh, conserved quantities so using equation of motion in quantum mechanics but the symmetry arises right from de broglie so de broglie says uh, if light has dual character the matter also will have dual character so nature loves symmetry so that was a concept put forth by de broglie earlier 1925 so symmetry then then not what symmetry plays are played a major role and here whenever we talk about the symmetry we think about uh, two major important uh, ideas entities one is the hamiltonian another one is the state wave state vector wave function hamiltonian and state uh, of the system will never change will be invariant under symmetries okay these two entities are very important so hamiltonian will never change hamiltonian will be invariant invariant means will never change similarly the state vector will never change under symmetry under symmetry means it's a transformation from one system to another system and uh, three main uh, uh, types of symmetries one is the homogeneity of time homogeneity of space and isotropy of space three major types and two types of uh, two cases of uh, symmetries one will be discrete another one is continuous symmetry so the first one comes under discrete uh, symmetry the second and third will come under continuous symmetry so first we will see one by one homogeneity of time so time will be constant homogeneity different time will be unique for example if you are going to take uh, the system you want to measure the system today and i'll get some results either i can take energy or linear momentum or angular momentum i'll get some results and i'm going to measure tomorrow it will be the same so this is called homogeneity of time is it okay now homogeneity of space i'm going to measure some other quantity here and i am going to measure the same thing somewhere outside outside the room i am going to change the place so homogeneity of space this is called a translation translation motion okay so what we call this is also another symmetry then isotropy of space for example you just take uh, uh, the field around the earth so around the field earth if it is sphere it will be uniform just take electric field wherever you are going to measure the electric field if it is sphere perfect sphere then it will be uniform so what we call this as isotropy of space so the property will be equal in all the three directions all the directions so isotropy so these three things are very important so one is homogeneity of time homogeneity of space and isotropy of space so now we are going to look into in detail about the symmetries in quantum mechanics so for just to take for example 
will take uh, the wave function of a quantum system. So this is a quantum system. Okay, and uh, this is represented in terms of a xi. Now I am going to using this first one homogeneity of time. I am going to measure this quantum system after some time. So using time evolution operator, unitary operator. This unitary operator will operate on the original system and it will give me the new system. So this new system is recorded after some time using time development operator. So this is time development operator. Is it okay? So this is old system. After some time, I'm going to measure the system after some time, after five minutes or five seconds or nanoseconds. Then I will get the new system. This new system is psi prime, which is e which is equal to which is equal to the time development operator operates on the old system. Okay, so this is a time evolution operator, and even I can have a rotation. For example, I have a quantum system like this. I am going to rotate it, and I will have a new system. Correct? If I rotate, I will have another system. And the rotation operator operates on the old system will give me the new system. So this is another symmetry. Rotation also is another symmetry. So earlier we said time evolution, homogeneity of time. That also is one of the symmetries. This is another symmetry. I can combine these two. I can combine these two. First, I am going to I am going to use time evolution operator. After getting the results, I am going to use the rotation operator. Okay, is it clear? First, I am going to use the time evolution operator and get the new system. Of the new system, I am going to operate the rotation one. So first, time evolution operator and then rotation. I can get this equation. So the new system will be a rotation operator. Operates on this one. Most this one operates on this one. After getting the results, so this one will operate. Okay. Similarly, I can interchange also. First, I can use rotation operator. After getting the results, I can use time evolution operator, and I will get this equation. Correct? This equation. And I must get the same answer, provided any one of the quantities, any one of the operators must be symmetry. It's a very very important concept. Any one of the operators must be symmetric. Only then, only then I can get R u x on psi, which is equal to u r x on psi. Any one of the operators should be symmetric, as I said. So put together that will give you u r minus R u, which is equal to zero. It implies that u comma R equals zero. So both the quantities will commute with each other. Very important. One. It means that simultaneously you can measure. Simultaneously can measure u and r. So provided here we said just now the rotational symmetry. Provided you have rotational symmetry. Okay, is it okay? So these two operators they operate they operate on any quantum system and any one of the operators must be symmetry. Only then they will commute with each other. So they can they can be measured simultaneously. Okay, they will have simultaneous eigenstates. It it means they will have same eigenstates. They can be measured. Okay. So as I said just now about homogeneity isotropy of space. So this is isotropy of space. Suppose if you have any charged material, the electric field comes out from the material on on all the directions. Isotropy in all the directions, the electric field is measured is constant. Okay, so that is invariant in space. So that is a, that's about isotropy of space. This is also one of the symmetries. The symmetries are associated with respectively the invariance. So as I said, any experiment we are going today and tomorrow, I must take the same experiment. I will get the same answer. So they are invariant. So time translation. That is called a time translation. Okay, space translation. So this is your space translation. This is your time translation. Okay, for space translation, momentum is conserved. Time translation, we are going to take the energy, so source of energy. For rotation invariance, angular momentum is conserved. Okay, so conserved property is very important. 
so that will give me the constant equation of motion as constant motion both will commute with each other and any one of the operators must be must be symmetric so all those things are very important is it clear see as i said just now okay so here for the rotation angular moment is conserved space translation linear momentum is conserved time translation energy is conserved so these three observables in quantum mechanics are conserved constant of motion energy linear momentum and angular momentum so they are all observables for example just take rotation so here rotation we are talking about rotation so in rotation angular momentum is conserved in all the directions we have the same angular momentum so here also rotation suppose we are going to rotate with 120 degree or 240 degree 360 degree answer will be the same so this is the first rotation this is the second rotation that will be a third rotation they are called the generators of rotation second one third one will be generators so they are all invariant under rotation similarly you can go for the rotation of the squared one with with this angles 90 180 270 360 so they are all generators so generators of rotations and this will be example for the linear symmetry <coughs> suppose if i have a charged particle q1 particle q2 particle this some distance r if i exchange if i exchange q1 to q2 q2 to q1 okay again the answer will be the same this is called a linear symmetry suppose if you have sun and earth so there will be some attractive force if you exchange earth to sun sun to earth again we will have a linear symmetry okay so these are all examples for linear symmetries so it implies that whenever a system is invariant under space translation the linear moment is conserved just now we looked into so whenever it is invariant under rotation its angular momentum is conserved so these two things already we looked into so if a is symmetry as, as i said the hamiltonian and wave function will be always invariant correct right from the beginning we thought okay we discussed and if a is symmetry and a comma h commutator that will be equal to zero so both will commute with each other it implies that a is constant the observables in symmetries refer constant of motion okay they are conserved quantities so we know that time evolution starting the equation is given by this equation we know that i h cross d psi by dt equals h psi time evolution operator it's a very important one time development of equation and here it is given psi is a function of position and uh, time and hamiltonian also is function of position and time now we are going to the transform so under transform under transformation psi becomes your psi prime okay new psi prime what is the condition that unitary operator operates on the old psi that will give me new psi okay we know already similarly h primes h prime and unitary operator operates on h that will give you new hamiltonian so the new hamiltonian becomes exactly like this is it okay so this is my old hamiltonian and this will be my new hamilton new hamiltonian new hamiltonian new eigen value equation so so it implies that the system is said to have a symmetry if h equals if h equals h prime we discussed already psi prime equals psi and h h prime equals h and this is a symmetry of the hamiltonian so if so the unitary operator will always commute with the hamiltonian it implies that unitary operator because it shows some symmetry so u comma h with a commutator that equal to zero so we discussed already about uh, this earlier equation of motion from heisenberg picture correct this one we know already this equation so the last term the second term does not depend on explicitly on time so this will go off this will become zero this will commute with each other so this term will become zero it implies that d the expectation value of a divided by dt equals zero it means that a is constant so constant of motion it's a conserved quantity okay so we know that the time evolution starting equation is given by this time development equation is given by this now what we can do is just use uh, this equation h psi equal to e psi i h cross d psi by dt okay we have used we have used that one 
Now, for symmetry of the system, we know that u h equals zero. Okay, we know already. U h equals zero implies that u h of psi equals h u of psi. We know already. Now, we just take u here. Instead of h psi, you can write i h d psi by dt. So you keep h is as it is, and u also operates on psi. You just keep it like that. Now I bring this u inside. So u is an operator. Bring u inside. I h cross d d u acts on psi, which is equal to h u psi. Look at this equation and this equation. They obey same Schrodinger equation. Okay, look at this equation. So this is about psi, and this is about u acts on psi. So you, it implies that equation 3.125 and 3.126. This equation it implies that psi and u acts on psi obey same Schrodinger equation. So it shows about, about symmetries. So if both operators are symmetry, they commute with each other. U and h equals zero with a commutator. They obey same Schrodinger equation. U operator is constant in time. This is conserved quantity. The inner product between the pair of transformed states must be the same as the inner product between the original states. We will see later. Okay. It implies that inner product before the measurement and after the measurement in terms of time or in terms of space are the same. It says that preserved quantity. Inner product is preserved. The answer for the inner product will be the same. Okay. It it says. The symmetry is a linear unitary transformation in the Galois space, which gives solution to the Schrodinger equation. Just now we looked into Schrodinger equation, the solution. We are acting on the solutions to the Schrodinger equation. If any observable commutes with the Hamiltonian, then the rate of change of the quantity will be always zero. Rate of change of thing will be because a is a is constant. Okay, because a is symmetry, a is a conserved quantity, so this must be equal to zero. This must be equal to zero. The rate of change of the quantity will be zero. Hence, the expectation value of the quantity will be constant in time. So, just now we looked into this. Can be verified with the energy, linear momentum, angular momentum of an isolated system, which are conserved. If the Hamiltonian, what are you doing? If the Hamiltonian commutes with the displacement operator, then the momentum operator is constant in constant of motion. For example, linear momentum is a conserved quantity. Somebody is shaking. So Hamiltonian commutes with the rotation operator. Then the angular momentum is a conserved quantity. Okay, angular momentum is a conserved quantity. Linear momentum here it is in the rotation in the rotation uh, symmetry we have angular momentum. We are talking about uh, linear momentum. Okay, that is uh, space translation. This is space translation. This is in terms of rotation symmetry. Here it is linear momentum is conserved. Here it is angular momentum is conserved. So put together, you have time translation. The energy is conserved quantity. According to the relation, E equals I h cross d by dt. So this is t is here, correct? So here E is here. So just look at this one. This will symmetry will be your time translation, and the conserved quantity will be your energy. So the related formula is like this. You have a space translation. The linear momentum is a conserved quantity. And look at uh, the relation P equals minus I h cross d by d x. X is here, so space translation. Okay, P is a conserved quantity. And for the rotation, we have the angular momentum is a conserved quantity. And we know already this expression. L x equals minus I h cross d by d phi. And phi stands for the rotation. So rotation. And your L is that will be the conserved quantity. Reflection space. What we call is a parity, mirror image. So this is a space inversion, reflection in space. Okay. So time translation will be homogeneity in time. The first slide we looked into, and your space translation will be homogeneity in space. Rotation will be is isotropy in space. And the parity is uh, parity comes under discrete symmetry. Other two come, other two symmetries come under continuous symmetry. If the observable corresponding to the operator A is conserved, 